What's coming next for Battlefield 1? We've just had the spring update, including platoons, passworded servers, new ribbons, four new level 10 weapons for us to unlock. But as always, DICE are already working on the next patch, new content and all the fixes that come with it. We're now moving into this accelerated point of Battlefield 1's life cycle, where patches are going to be dropping monthly. That's a timescale we've never seen in Battlefield games before, and it means that the new content and all the fixes and everything else will be coming faster than ever. Now before I jump into all of the details about what the developers are working on currently and what we can expect to see in the future, I want to confirm what we already know is coming in the May update for Battlefield 1. DICE did release a news post a couple of weeks back that gave us a good indication as to what the next patch will contain. Planning for our next releases, we've heard you loud and clear. We still have some work to do to make the game as frictionless as possible. We're dedicating the May update to revisions that will improve your quality of life in Battlefield 1. This includes streamlining the flow into matches, especially operations, and improving many gameplay grievances that will hopefully make the action feel more balanced and fair. So if the spring update was all about trying to get players to play together, build their own communities within the game with the introduction of platoons and private servers, then the May update seems to be focused around housekeeping, tidying up some of those loose ends that DICE have left hanging within the game and optimizing everything so it feels nice and fluid. The specific mention of operations and the way you join into matches is a big positive. I'm sure you've all run into the issue of trying to join an operation and simply being dumped into an empty server. Battlefield 1 had some huge changes to it compared to its predecessor Battlefield 4 in that it's adopted a brand new in-game UI as opposed to using the browser system called Battlelog. Now this massive change was bound to come with issues and lacking features, but we're finally reaching a point where after the game's release, the in-game UI is offering what most players expect and is kind of reaching the levels of what Battlelog used to provide. Now hopefully, the May update will solidify that even more and improve the matchmaking and ease of access into getting into games. I'd love to see operations make it into the server browser. But beyond that official line from the Battlefield website, what more can we expect in the future for Battlefield 1? At the moment, one of the bigger things coming is the brand new night map called Nivelle Knights, and that's due to launch in June for premium members. Now, as of recording this video, it is currently the 28th of April. That means June is about four weeks and a little bit away. And if we look at the time frame for usually deploying updates, we're probably looking at about mid-June for that map at the moment, although nothing's been confirmed, however. Nivelle Knights is a full trench warfare focus map and it works really well on the linear game modes like Rush and Frontlines. And the nighttime setting offers up something completely different that we don't have in Battlefield 1 at the moment. Because of the reduced visibility, you've got to rely on audio a lot more, listening for the footsteps because enemies can hide anywhere in the dark and it's definitely harder to spot their movement. And alongside that, although again we have no announcement for this DLC yet, but in the name of the Tsar, the Russian DLC is next in line to be released for Battlefield 1. And based on past titles, DLCs for Battlefield tend to be released every three months. That would put in the name of the Tsar up for a June release as well as Nivelle Knights. But having two separate DLC releases in the same month might be a little bit too much, and if I were DICE, I would be spreading those out a little bit. So we know the Russian DLC is coming, and it will be coming fairly soon, I expect, but again, no date confirmed for it so far. That sort of covers off the content perspective of what's coming for Battlefield 1. Plenty of things to get excited about, but diving into some more specifics, DICE have recently revealed the new stage of their Roots initiative. 
Now, this is a topic that I covered in my Veterans Rejoice video. I'll link that down in the description for you. And it's an initiative that DICE is running in order to help improve and build on the mechanics of Battlefield 1 and bring them, I think, back into line with what most players expect from a Battlefield game. A big part of that was Ammo 2.0, but that's almost been and gone now. There are a few more changes that are going to be made, but they're moving on to core gameplay and game mechanics. And this is really exciting for me because it's where a lot of the complaints from the Battlefield community end up coming from. Here's some of the high level points that they're going to be evaluating and testing in the CTE. We've got soldier movement, vehicle movement, suppression, weapon mechanics, including grenades. That's why I said ammo 2.0. Gadget mechanics, melee mechanics, destruction, interaction mechanics, game mode mechanics. And that's like win conditions, catch up, flow, rule sets and the scoring. Communication, that's spotting, chat, comoros, orders, voice over IP. And finally, HUD real estate. And this comes down to timings of when things come up on the screen, placements, the first person HUD, as well as the kill screen and deploy, what they're calling the main loop. Now that's a lot of stuff to be working on, but in my opinion, pretty much all of this needs looking at. Soldier movement currently, especially on PC, is in need of tweaking. You can simply spam AD on the keyboard, that moves your soldier left and right, and it's easier to dodge bullets this way than if you were to run for cover because you can move insanely fast backwards and forwards. So it's good to know that DICE is working on that. Suppression, again, I think that needs a tweak, perhaps making it only occur for support players when they're firing an LMG or scouts when they're firing their rifles. That would make sense in my opinion rather than suppression coming from an SMG or a shotgun. You don't really suppress people with those kind of weapons. Destruction could be good to explore, potentially make it clearer to people what can be destroyed and what can't be destroyed. That would be a good way to go. Game mode mechanics is a great thing to hear with things like catch up being mentioned. Currently, a game of conquest, if a team is ahead by more than about 100 tickets or so, it becomes very hard for the losing team to catch up and win the round. It would be great to see this addressed or even the older conquest system perhaps being tested. That'd be a cool thing for a future patch, I think. And lastly, we've got the mention of the kill screen to deploy loop. You know that annoying swooping animation that looks really cool? but actually means you spawn in on dead players sometimes or right in front of an enemy who shoots you immediately. Yes, DICE are going to be looking into that. Thank God. We need a better system than what we have right now. It looks really cool and it immerses you, but it doesn't function very well. Substance over style, I think this scenario needs. To begin with, DICE is focusing mainly on soldier and vehicle movement. Now, to give my own feedback here, I'd like for the weird flinching to be gone from this game. This is where when you're shooting at a player, sometimes the body that you're shooting at reacts to a bullet, maybe tripping it up or looking like they sort of bend over a little bit. And this can put your aim right off and cause you to miss the next few shots if you're firing a semi-automatic or a fully automatic weapon. Now sure, this flinching would happen in real world combat, but this is a video game and having good consistent aim is really important. I'd love for DICE to remove this flinching so that when you're shooting at someone, you don't get cheated out of a potential kill by a game mechanic. So that's what the future currently looks like for Battlefield 1. Lots of new content on the horizon with the Nivelle Knights map and the Russian DLC. Don't forget that Russian DLC is going to have four new maps in it, five new weapons, potentially a new vehicle, new game mode, new elite class, new behemoth, and lots of other things besides, I'm sure of it. Lots of improvements coming in the May patch as well, especially to operations. Finally, we're going to be able to get back into some operations again kind of missed playing that game mode and larger changes happening on lots of other things to do with gameplay mechanics. Let me know what you think of all of this down below in the comments. It'd be good to know what you think is the most important thing right now that needs improving in Battlefield 1 and maybe we can just have a conversation down there in the comments section and see what everyone thinks. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.